I'm gonna kick it off with the with my friends from Estonia. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, let's go free. I'm gonna have some more fun. Go. So we got a lot of people coming in late. So I told you. Anyway, uh, <laughs> uh, anyway, uh, so I have two hours again, and I thought maybe let's uh, do one move, but let's do it in all, of, like maybe five or six different places. Uh, and it's kind of like a, it's a submission, it's a seatbelt escape, but we do it in, in various positions. Uh, and if you ask me why that, I have no clue. I just, I, I think people need to do it. And I've seen, uh, let's say, people should use it more and I would like to see it often. And it's just one of the very tricky moves that I think if I present it to you, it's not like a, you haven't seen it, I think you have. But then there's certain things are there that uh, I think I want to address. And I love to teach certain things that not work only one place but works in multiple places, otherwise it's uh, very situation specific and then you will not find use for that. It's not, it, it's not bad to have something specific, but it's very hard to do a true class, then I have to be very specific to everybody's game kind of, or, or something. So uh, the move is getting out of seatbelt uh, and turning inward. Uh, and then we can do it in Anaconda, like arm drag. Uh, I think we can do it in other, other places. We'll see, we'll see how it goes. So, Basically what I need you to do, uh, so this is a seatbelt, and I need you to slide down, go, and circle up. Yes. And uh, the sequence should be like, the head will stay in, so don't take the head out. So turn as much, you do it this way, because we do it on the ground later. Uh, that you will get your elbow out first, go. Turn, 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 see, and now elbow comes out, go. Pull, no, no, pull the elbow out, see. And then head doesn't have to sit. Usually the norm is you want to get the head out, but if you get the elbow out, you know, in stand-up, you will body lock escape. Well, body lock, right away. So, and uh, if you want to take the head out, you have to squat a bit more and do uh, something else, but just start with this. So, uh, squeeze first lightly, you know, and then you can actually have a really good squeeze, go. And then feel that seat, go. And then I end up with head, and this is quite dangerous for me, yeah? This is very well used in wrestling. Uh, they pull it in. It's kind of like when you do it in wrestling, it's almost like a bowing to somebody. Very elegant move. And uh, you can do it in, uh, we do it in the back escapes, we do it in different cases. Uh, like back situations. So I'll try to give you context for that also where it happens. But it, we're already in that situation. But I want, just want to do, see that move everywhere. So go left side, right side, switch on your own. Start slow, then squeeze it up. And it's still possible and you see like, the seatbelt is actually quite dangerous move if you don't know the weaknesses of that, your hold. And that's why later you, should, you prefer Kimura seatbelt and everything else. They're a little bit harder uh, to escape, but also harder to get. So start with that, and then feel that only elbow gets out. And uh, also notice that you want to pull your head out first. But just find that nice wedge when this, is the angle when this elbow just pops out. Let's go. Pair up, only in stand-up. Oh, oh, bro! You kind of like black, uh, you know, black. Black, only black, 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 black. Yes. So, uh, let's, see, let's say, the key is, I will talk about later also, the key is to create a body torque that will will create that, like you get this and body torques, and then it's, if you move less body, then it's a lot of arms, yeah, and then it's tricep and I have a frame, and it has to be just perfect, yeah? And if you create the body torque, it's enough, and then it just pops out, and then it's less so the arm strength this way. So you will need that also in, uh, in situations, so go slowly. So, stay here, try to pull the arm. Stay, return a little bit more. Pull the arm. See, it's still like it's weak. And it's important to turn this in. Go. Go, go, go. turn the body. Turn the body. Yeah. No, no, don't take the head out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, go. Turn the body. Turn around, yes. And so the, you have to turn the body and then it kind of pops out. And it literally goes this way. If you go anywhere else, 
it gets more stuck, then you still, you know, maybe they let go because they feel they're losing later, so you get a like false positive. But if they really hold on and they are stubborn, you find the best angle to pull the elbow out. It has to come from the elbow, and it weirdly it just works. Go, 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 throw, yeah, and, and that's super dangerous, and then, you know, they have one hook and I have a wizard and then everything happens. So try to tur turn as much as you can and create that torque from the shoulders. You will need that also. We will first thing we do, I think it's even I will say, uh, is one, one thing we do is, is the back escapes to the guard top. And then you would need that move to do it. It's actually quite quite technical. So we maybe do a second one so you get like first sense of something else I, I will show you. But in MMA you see it a lot in a, you know they're in the back. They turn around and end up in top guard. Because it's slippery and everything else, but with the seat, but you can do the same thing from the escape to the top right away. It has to be, everything has to be sequenced very perfectly, and it's just like magic how it works. And then reality kicks in and they will interfere a little bit. Okay, so a little bit more. Uh, you can do it like slow, then if you feel everything, like when you have to pull this, when you have to turn, how the body moves, do it faster, you can hide sort of things, but you win with speed. But also squeeze as much as you can and then you feel like here, then you drop the shoulder a little bit, you turn and then finally you pull it out. So feel how body, you know, and if you get stuck, just feel like maybe you do this and then it continues again. So try to understand it as much as you can in a warm-up section. Let's go. Do it fast, do it very slow. And make it tighter. Make it tight. So um, do it too. So you do it, and if you fail, then it's your fault. Yes. So uh, let's do this. You're in a seat belt, uh, underhook downside. This is part of our back survival. Also, you know, usually I do. We end up here, and then you know, eventually you wanna do, you know, belly wait, belly down stuff. You know, you wanna tilt him, get back up, and we know, wait, and we know already that. You know, as a context, if I will shrimp uh, go north south, they keep baby bridge, mini bay, mini one, and they shrimp with me. Then I can't go belly down. Actually, it's quite annoying. Yeah, and uh, there's a system of what I have to do, and you know, I can read that, read back take from here. But because a mini baby bridge, it's quite difficult to put hooks in and stuff. If somebody has knee up, you know, those things can happen easily, eat more easily. So anyway, right now we do the torque. So from here, the same thing. And then you have to feel, and then you have to go to knees right now. Go, go, go to knees. See? And now, take the elbow out. Not the head, the elbow. Oh, yeah, sorry. <laughs> well, yeah, head comes too, but head is not necessary. Because uh, there, you have different endings. The head out, elbow in, or elbow out, head in. So you have different, two uh, different endings. So you squeeze. Now you need to go to knees to create the torque. Other way, elbow is in. So stop. And if you're in both knees on a mat, both knees on a mat. Now you can't get the elbow out because both knees are a mat. So you lift one leg. And also you can sag away from me. See? And go elbow out. And now you have a head in and on the underhook right away. That's why it's kind of beneficial to leave it in also. So you already have a good head position, arm out, and I'm exposing myself to underhooks. Go there. So here, and I feel the position, blah, 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 go to knees. And then I will squeeze here, wait, and then it's like really good. So this has to be up, yeah? So otherwise you can't create a torque. And wait, test right now. Turn more and pull the elbow out. See, it's almost, but then they sag even away from me a little bit, yeah? And then it's a matter of how much you sag away. So do it to me. Because if you do it, if you sag too much, I can push you away also, so you lose a lot of stuff under the downside. So, uh, here, you're not going to the knees. Hold on tight. Now you can go to the knees. So this is again mini baby reach. Here, it's quite more dangerous yeah, to, to stay here in a way. And you will find that it's super hard. So hold on tight. Now I do juji. So go, hold. It's ready. I'm turning around with that move. Hold. And now, usually they push. And then we end up in some situation if they're adapted. If they're stubborn, and uh, of course expect people to be also stubborn, you're fighting, then they, certain behaviors are overwritten in a fight, and people act differently than they act in a gym environment. Uh, so 
know that they can be stubborn and mostly if they know what they're doing they have to let go but you you squeeze so try it kind of like an underhook backside without the hooks and feel that if you give them the back it's quite hard to turn around it's like you're a little bit stuck here you know but then you do that what i recommend you to do also yeah and you actually have made those things also and this is The way to go. Okay? Feel that. Let's go. Stay in breaks and go for the knees. And the elbow is the main thing. If the head pops out, also, who cares? Yeah, then it makes it a bit of So, seat belt, yeah? Uh, fun part is the mini baby bridge was discovered uh, by the world in February, yeah? That's a good joke, no? Yeah, okay. Uh, in some green basement that recently got invaded. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I've seen the pictures. Yeah, so, so that's why you don't do green room. Okay. So anyway, uh, mini baby bridge because first we you know it was weird that you know I'm building stuff and I I knew that problem that we had here and we were trying to do hawking and everything if you've done the previous things. So you always have to know that I know what's wrong with stuff and I just don't have answers and what we have already provides better answers but we know I know exactly what's wrong and then there's going to be an add-on later you know so then you can always ask me if I'm developing something Preet what are your problems you're seeing that you have to fix in the future you're not happy with and I, I can say those those areas I need a little bit like some weird thing has to happen there. But I still, I usually provide systems that already work enough so they can, you know, I can teach them. So, uh, anyway, baby bridge, go. Mini baby bridge. Turn to the side more. No, no. Yeah, more to the side here. So you slip the shoulder, we can go to knees. So go to knees. Go, go. So stop. Here, if I would have a shadier harness, uh, and this, you don't have to lift this knee, pull the elbow out. Yeah, this also works. You only do it because you have to. Yeah, and you only like, what is the strongest hold and how do I beat it? And then if, if there's more other benefits of lifting this knee, because wait, if you, if you are here and now if your leave, knee is not up, I can have that knee down and I can wrestle you better. If this knee is up and usually this, then you have a, this is actually quite difficult for me to go. I have to go around that knee to pick it up and uh, I run into that knee so I can underhook. Go the knee down. I get a low overhook and this is already dangerous for you. You have to slide away. You can't turn in anymore so much. So, uh, and also if you have benefit, if you can do it, knee and belly, you can have that. This, uh, I run into single leg like this, yeah? And then you have a time to re-underhook me back. Okay, so there's benefits of lifting the leg, go back. Um, so it's more like a wrestling rules because I'm gonna wrestle you with here. Because you turn your back, go. See, Hugo, lift the leg. See, and this is very important to create a torque. And so if I underhook, slowly, let's go to pull that out. So I run here, see? And this is underhook back. Underhook back. Yes, you have space here more. This is hard with a single leg. If the knee would be on a mat, go. This is easier for me to run, kill the corner, and get the leg on a shelf. So just you have to have like a Y also because you have an easier time pulling it out. Plus, periphery movements require this because you, you, can, you can move, you can put like the defensive modules into Pele's way better. Okay, do it again. So really feel again. Baby Rich, go. So go, turn the knees. So really hold, yeah? Hold in, knee up. And you feel that knee up right away already torques something, see? And then elbow happens. This is quite dangerous for me. So really test it, go. So it's not like a joke or I let you go, go. Go, go. Knee up, see, and it's still getting out. Okay, so then you trust it really. And if they let go earlier, then you have to time it because you have to feel when I'm letting go, then you're ready to do something else because I'm gonna probably push it to you. And then if you escape this to top guard, all fine. So don't expect to get side control actually. It only happens when I'm stubborn because we're testing it, that's why it happens. But most of you will let go because you don't want to end up side control, so you let go earlier. But then we can test. You know, and then you're not ready for if somebody actually squeezes. So feel that really, hold tightly, a little bit like I said. I, I went with them a little bit to really hold it, and they really feel which way the butt moves, so torque happens, 
knees up so everything is covered and then you're ready okay really really test it so I did it I think I squeezed enough and we have a lot of weight difference so it still has to work okay so let's go now I'm asking you to do it inside the guard and because you know the move you already know everything you need to know you can do it on your own uh, so what, what do I mean uh, David bottom please and uh, Miska have a hooking under hook top, top side now take the back okay. take the back take some, uh, Miska's back under hook top side falling you fall here yes stop yeah hooking yes uh, that's all good Where this is already defensive structure you know killing the angles uh, wrist fighting blah 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 now when I show you this you have a, you have questions what if you know that he David, without them in context he will use the hooks and he will kick me out who cares let's not go there I want to just show you that David will not interfere with uh, anything and lets Miska turn around inside the guard that's like a baseline that can also happen and then we make it harder because clearly they can re ad adapt and uh, not let you have a, in the top guard happen so do this same move but now it's different you know now it's a I tilted I will explain it uh, probably badly so turn around with the same move inside the guard you just keep it hold go don't go to triangle okay good do it again now it's like you pull the head out not the elbow and we will figure it out so that was good so just hold it you know uh, seat belt is open enough at the moment yeah with the whole thing you rip it up uh, open a little bit go uh, and just move yeah so see this is very important when this slips in he turns around yes I'll just give you a couple of hints go do it again the balancing act happens that the leg has to come here it seems do it again Miska so walk your legs here oh no no walk your oh no give me the legs both legs bottom leg also here see and now balance yourself here both legs no no give me the legs don't come to knees and pull the elbow out and keep the legs here okay? and now you're getting on top so if the, it seems like if the legs are there you're crowding the turn you don't turn so fast because you're on your own way and then the, you get to the knees with the elbow a little bit stuck but it has to be really like legs here to create that balancing act right that legs are coming here like you went to the knees before you created that torque and then elbow so this uh, tilt here with the legs creates that torque in upper body and then you slip it head stays in the middle like in a guard and then you're out and arms are both uh, next to the opponent so do it again slowly legs here both legs here we like balancing that go, go and then you get on top so it's even like could be we will make it more technical because it's like almost legs are in the air you're like a, you're doing like almost like leg facing it here and then, and then you go up afterwards so feel the sequence uh, start slow so understand the move that you have to do so on the hook upside yeah you can if you know, don't know the hawking just have an upside and just turn around do it sloppy first you know just whichever way you can just turn around and then make it tighter and then you have to do basically instead up and then we have to do this move first what you did guys uh, turn around you went a little bit wrestling you know go go and then this happened so inside the guard we literally have this go this happens okay so this has to but I cannot do the balance of that with the legs but it goes that goes downwards go yeah so that's necessary that torque and that leg swinging creates that torque so now it's that direction figure it out do your best side this is quite dangerous move for an attacker because you know you lose the most so to speak they're inside the top guard good MMA self-defense no gi gi whatever yeah and then they will adapt probably not let me have it because clearly you can use hooks to keep it away so obvious there but don't worry about it and also if you go like yeah who does that watch MMA they turn around all day and the fa most famous turnaround I think it, maybe you've seen it I, I totally see random matches in YouTube I don't watch that much actually but just I end up watching good matches I don't know how that actually inspired me if you have seen the Roger Gracie and Tim Kennedy white fight uh, and uh, Tim Kennedy I don't want to say killed Roger Gracie Jiu Jitsu but he escaped uh, I think uh, Roger Gracie back I think many times a couple of at least two times and one of the times he turned around differently he went arm over and went like you know like a spider and he went he went in but he, he turned around against one of the greats yeah so but it's slippery everything else and you know it's the MMA it's different 
the, all the environment, so to speak, and it's not a keyhole. So it's been done pretty, pretty against pretty good, good guys, and Tim Kennedy is, uh, you know, also like a physical monster, I guess. So, uh, but I, I don't think I have time to teach you this. Over, I usually go here. So, but it becomes a, it's under the price a little bit. So this is easier than underhooks. This is you end up then having underhooks on you. So it's a little bit more dangerous, but somewhat easier. So anyway, that's the context. So do this move like David and Miska did. Wider, go tighter, underhook upside now. Okay, let's go. I noticed, I mentioned that, but this was very good balancing act. And uh, Margus is strong enough to have a good test. Go, feel it, yeah. See, and the legs are there. This is the necessary part. This is the coin to need direction to create the torque. See? And then, then you fight it and then it's going to the knees and... Of course, you know, it's, uh, you know, usually, every, you know, Jiu Jitsu is, uh, everybody says in the first couple of minutes do Jiu Jitsu and MMA fight because it's not slippery. And if they're more slippery, then it's more easy as it is, you know? If you have, if you have very dry skin, everything is hard. The key is more hard. So, but that's what the balancing guy. So feel it. And uh, you can also go like, dun, 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 like, like, like dun, 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 and finally it comes out, you know? And then you understand it has to be like dun, fast. So throw your legs and then torque fast around. So do it, do it one more time. So you did it faster, yeah. It was a little bit good way sloppier than this, but it was like faster torque upper body. See, we'll see how it does it. It swings the legs and upper body goes faster. See? That's the like boom, turn around. So, but to feel the technique, you kind of need this to feel it like what's the good angle, what's that, you know, really from here it slips out. Because probably they will react earlier to fight for top, they let go, you know, fight for sweeps. Then you have a scramble there a little bit, who, who actually, you know, wins on top and open guard. Do it again. So you can do it with a swing more. So you feel the torque in the upper body. Yeah, go. He swings the legs. See? See the legs went the same way and the elbow rips, okay? So I would recommend both. This way, go faster. I really feel this that you like. And then go like, and finally. So don't, don't become smart. No, 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 I will sweep you here. Don't go, just let's feel it. Okay, let's go. Miska and David, come on. David, you take the back, Miska, you move. So, also, we, I, I didn't talk about it because I didn't want to, uh, but now we can mention because it's other way use too much arms. No, wait, wait, so slowly, turn around, and I will say stop, you stop, go. Stop, yeah, uh, squeeze hard, so. You have the other arm also. So, what would you do with the other arm? Push the elbow. Push the elbow a little bit. Yeah, still, I would prefer you pull the elbow out, but I'm just persistent about that. It's, the head is also good, but just to get the elbow out and just a little bit, you know. Okay, so just notice that, but I find that, uh, thank you. When you use the, when you're allowed to use the arms, you, be very, you become very arm dependent. And when you just have to understand the movement, you know, and then you add the arms as much as needed. Because I think if you do it in a, also in a sparring environment, it's actually their working ratio goes up because they're not ready for that. Right now, they just know what you're gonna do so they can really resist everything, you know, they don't have their own thoughts. But in a fight, they're looking for something, they're already thinking about, I will attack you, and then you turn around. So your chances, it's always like, the drilling has to be there also. This is not the full truth, yeah? They, they act unrealistically, actually. They're just holding you and they know exactly what's gonna happen. But in sparring, think about, do you know what's gonna happen exactly in a sparring? It's mostly your thoughts, what, how you're gonna attack, and what, how they're gonna do it to you, and then it's, it's a different situation. So likelihood that this happening is actually higher. So if you can do it semi-good or good also when they're ready, likelihood is that. But it has to be like a, you know, explosive move and then you know, figure it out. So, uh, then we can adapt to this. Uh, let's do it again, Marcos, you hold the back. And slowly, they try to turn around inside the guard, but Marcos can use his hooks. So they have to shrimp out a little bit. So do it again. Turn around and Marcos leaves. Oh, turn around, yes. Uh, you can do this and also turn a little bit and put, you can put the hook inside the, this, inside this. Go. So that that's, makes it really hard to turn inside the guard. So now you start to move here. Go, 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 go away, go away. Yeah. And still, go away, go away, and still turn. Yeah. And then it's a fight, wait. Then it's a fight about that, that, you know, reaching and Marcus has underhook, yeah? And so we have a fight about that. 
And uh, this is actually quite dangerous for Marcus, if it would be, if this leg wouldn't be attached. If he has this leg, this is kind of safe. Wait, uh, let go of this. This, and now with this, re-arm drag and go. So, see. So, there, there's a usually a scramble idea as always, you know? It's a totally different topic, I can't teach it, but this is very fun, I'm fascinated by those scrambly positions, how to solve them, have rules, and let's drill them, you know? But today we have a different topic. But those are the ones that actually matter in a high level, to win those scrambles. You have those moments of freedom a little bit, openness, and then who wins, who gets a better position. And this is usually where high level wins because they've been there more, they're calmer, and you will do some stupid mistake as grab, and they underhook you. So I would rather not do anything, post the hip, get out. So like I said yesterday, it's better to go away than turn back here because you go in lion's den and uh, you might lose, but putting the arm on the hip, do it again. Putting arm on the hip and just getting out, technical stand up, whatever, creating neutrality, do it again. Uh, hook in, Marcos, go, 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 shrimp, post on the hip. Post on hip, go, go. Marcus fight for top. Get out, get out, get out, get out, get out. See, don't, see what happened? Get out. Oh, man. Yes, <laughs> do it again. <laughs> this would be, don't do it, just go here, you know? Just don't go there, yeah? There's also with the bridge and roll, but you know, it's kind of high level to do it. So hook, go, elbow, and push, push, and get out. Marcus fights for top. Get out, get out, get out, get out. Don't give under hook. <laughs> yeah? You had the hip post. Yeah. You could have, you know, hip post and, Get out. But then you reached somehow, yes. why? I don't know, and he got unhook again. Because Jiu Jitsu. Yeah, because Jiu Jitsu. So, so uh, just don't give underhooks that easily. It should be a fight. Yeah, so uh, it's important to, I usually go to knee bend. And the hip underhooks are quite dangerous because they can step over to um, plata mounts and everything else. So if you really do a hip underhook, then you have to be really attached to them and, and everything. So. Yeah, I, I always, when I did seminars, I think I always mentioned that underhook is mostly in jiu-jitsu taught wrong. Uh, it should be taught like wrestling underhook, not like jiu-jitsu, because just, it's so common in jiu-jitsu escapes in side control to do this. Yeah. I would just say stop doing that. You will get so much in trouble. You have a mount, neon belly, darses, barses, larses, everything else you want from YouTube, yeah? So just stop doing that. And uh, this is quite dangerous. Uh, it could be a trap because you wait for the wizard and you can do stuff, but as a fundamental thing, just don't grab like this. It's, e it's easier to do something else instead than to stop doing something. Do you want us to hip post instead? <laughs> so, uh, anyway, hip post is good, but there I would go to the knee bend. And I think that side control is wrong position to underhook anyway. Just to notice, I would underhook here. Go. I would underhook here. I would use underhook. I, I wouldn't go. I wouldn't underhook here. This is an empty arm and very arm dependent. Yeah, I would underhook here. And this is, you know, movement patterns and wrestling and everything else. So underhook is, I feel it's like easier to do it. This arm underhook requires so much stuff, like strength and stuff. And also the top person to not know wrestling. If they don't know darses, uh, step over mounts and all platas and reserves and everything, I guess you can get away with that. But as soon as they know it, watch all dars instructionals. They all happen, people underhooking without the click in end and then it, your arm slips, and then I get darses. There's quite many instructionals that do darses like this against wrong underhooks. So, and it's just a weird story. It's just like, you can ask Charles, but I think it turned, uh, you can ask Chris also. Uh, Chris Payne's coming here tomorrow, I think. Yeah? He should arrive today. Okay, so. He, he's teaching tomorrow, he should arrive. Yeah, he told me he comes in Thursday, actually, you know that? Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I, I was, I, I saw him <laughs> weekend, so I saw him. Uh, in uh, Charles, one of the favorite submissions Charles had was a Dars. And it was very early stages when, I, when we met with Chris. And then, you know, I was just teaching him the elbows close. And uh, I, I don't think Charles could, uh, Charles Dars to anybody in his gym. Because he was, a, uh, he was expecting wrong setup. He was expecting people on underhooking that, but nobody did. And uh, then the Charles setups were not as effective. And probably he adapted and did something, but you can ask Chris, but you know, maybe he, as a you know, hundred times darsing, maybe he did some, but he was he was definitely surprised by the ratio of darses that he would actually had success with, because people didn't underhook like you know all over the place wrongly. So uh, anyway, so uh, so you can adapt to this. Uh, do it again, one more time. So like uh, hooks, like Marcus did before. So two ways of doing hooks: turn around, stop. Yeah, one is this. If you so if you early hook it this, and then you know it's kind of. 
harder to turn around than everything else. He has a better chance of winning here. If he misses that, go. This hook happens. So mainly you can use that hook because that opens up the shrimp more. Okay? So the shrimp out, hip post, go go. Fight for top a little bit later. Go go go. Yeah? Marcus, fight for top if you can at some point. Oh, then it goes. Yes. Then it's turtle. Okay? So you have to shrimp enough, pull the elbow out, blah blah blah. Yeah? So, and uh, if you want to have like certain adaptation like Marcus did, do the ratio 3 to 1. We'll see what happens also, like if he really gets it and everything is right, then turtle and then we continue. So technique didn't work there and everything else is, that's also normal. So do the 3 to 1 ratio. Let them do it and see what other stuff is there. So you're ready if you don't get out also. Okay, let's go. Oh. So you have to go downwards. Yeah. Now go turn around. And then elbow, elbow first. And elbow goes inside. So it can't go through cavity of this. It has to go between us. Mm -hmm. And we get more stickier because of yeah. the sweat and stuff. So then it's harder. So we did it wrong. I will give you another one. We go back to the first one, kind of. And uh, because it's a seat belt. And I think I've seen Raul did it once. He sometimes does good things. <laughs> yes. And it's a very fancy move. Uh, just as a random statistics would be like uh, one of the Estonia, uh, uh, European, best Estonia, European best grapplers in females uh, is an Estonian girl, Liziva, trains in our gym. She has done it in a brown belt level, absolute also, in a competition, so uh, against the back takes. So what you do is invert, hip up, and then you go over me. So, see, and this happens, and now I can follow, wait, and if you, if you need that much, yeah. Then we can have a wrestling match because I will have to bump. So this will do the comeback escape. So if you want, uh, this is you know I don't know part of my system or whatever. <laughs> uh, it's just one of the direction. It's not the main one obviously, but it's the same move from different contexts, jumping over. And wrestlers do it a lot. If you see Ben Askren stuff, and they jump over like this a lot. So you have to escape the hooks. You know, have this really that protection. Go the hip up, and then go. See that? That is a super annoying thing. And then they have to balance and lift the neck. So, and then the ball. Okay, down. And what you should have, they're down here. Uh, the legs, how they are. Uh, head. So, so legs are his. Hook under the butt and leg like this. Don't do it like this. It clicks better and inter intervenes more with my movement. I have to shrimp out. I have a click here. So I'm pushing it down, kind of like this knee and belly. And then I'm pulling the arm out. And then if they grab here, they can't. And I have always time to underhook back. Well, we'll see. But if my knee is on a mat, always going to be a trouble. And then you have to know so much wrestling, you know, slide outs and everything. So it's not end of the world, but you know, we have to get there if there's a context. Could be like a two hours of, okay, how to kill underhooks and have a wizard, underhook back, and knee slide. So it's not that easy, but for you, just nullify everything good reset, uh, and then knee up. So do it again. Uh, to me, back escapes, you can start from the back, if you want. I let him do it. So we, and also, I think with you, we did this before, wait. With the hawking, give me both hooks. With the hawking, you actually can't reach for a bottom hook. Go, go bottom hook, Take, grab with the arm. See, it can, it can be grabbed because you're in hawking, yeah? So let's pretend the top one is also not in, so to speak, wait. We can have that situation, that is more common, yeah? And then we also had it recently, uh, back stuff that legs are like this actually, and you're shrimping, push my knee. See, go, go, go. And then kick my hook out, and then you go. And this happens. And right away, put your knee on the stomach, yes, and toes under my butt, yes. That's a good pressure. And then, I can't kick you a little bit. I'm actually stuck a little bit. So the pressure of the click doesn't allow me to cock you, uh, okay, kick you forward. So and blah, blah, blah. So uh, if that's too hard, just under the downside, hip up. If you do it like a ratio of two out of one or three out of one, starts on the back, keep the one, top hook out and you can clear it or just step it out. And you basically go here and then you invert over them. So, and if you invert over, you have to, as an attacker, hold your breath. Don't exhale at the same moment, yeah? If they go over you, it's like a little bit like this. So pull them and, and let them go. It's kind of uncomfortable a little bit. So 
Let's go. Start top hook, not in. Yeah. Okay? Otherwise, yeah. If, what the, if top hook is in, you can't do it. Uh, you actually have two different jump overs, but I think one is harder and one requires me to be, I don't know, uh, I'm quoting, Kotato is quoting me and then I'm changing my quotes. I said something very smart today. It's good to be smart and not good to be stupid, you know? <laughs> Today I was like, it's good to be stupid and not smart, you know? That you let people to turn around, so, okay? So, so, so you, know, you can always quote me, it's, it's just like, Brit Mikkelsen sounds really good, you know, it's just like, people quoting me, whatever I say. <laughs> you know, and the tattoo as an influencer, you can, you know, so. <laughs> yes. Uh, so, uh, start with top hook without in. Uh, what did I say right now? Start top hook, not in, without in. Well, also. Awesome. That's a quote. Estonian English. Yes. Anyway, start with top hook, yeah, not in, sorry. And uh, uh, put this leg on a mat. Yeah, here. So this is already harder. Plus, this arm can already protect. You see those fights all the time, you know. And it's important now to get rid of this bottom one. You can have this. Yeah, wonderful, go back. Or you can grab. Yes. And now you can walk, okay? This is a, you can be drilling this and you can be you go to shit and then something else, but this is a precursor. Now you li have to lift your butt. And now you can also land, you go, jump over and face my legs. Face my legs. Oh, yes. yes, jump yes, over. Yes, jump over, jump over and face my legs. Where are you? Jump over <laughs> and face my legs. Oh yes, this. I can do not. This, go back. this works. I go again, jump over, go and face my legs. Yes, go back. If my, <laughs> if my seat belt is shittier, uh, they can do it. So right now I have a better seat belt, they'll jump over, face my legs. <laughs> That's why it's very, very hard to do. That has to be a precursor of either lower seat belt, go, and then this could happen more, yeah. But if I have really, really good seat belt, it's very hard to turn the face to legs, go. <clears throat> and if you do, go, 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 jump, I know. We're gonna go. And then everything else happens. Go to knees. Leg up, arm out. Okay? So you can end up in the same thing, but they will usually cross face your face and then everything happens. So, and YouTube is full of those techniques where you jump over and face the legs. And, uh, but the, if you watch those videos, everybody opens the seatbelt before. That's why it can mostly do it. So either it's a very low seatbelt, you can turn your face, or they open up. And that is actually a very dangerous direction to teach because it's the precursor of shittier seatbelt or open the arms. If you have any decent one, you can't do it. So, so then there has to be a disclaimer in those videos that nobody has that why it's for, okay? So watch those videos again on YouTube. They're quite annoying actually. So uh, anyway, seatbelt, go up. And now jump over and that's why you, yeah, you're forced to go here. But then don't land on your hip. If you set on your hip and hip, this happens. Yeah, and now we have to go to the knees again, go. And we have to lay, more later fights. Okay, so that happens then, yeah. But then it's better to land right away on your knees. But, but also what Raoul was doing different, when you said, when you said to him, oh, I'll go and face my legs, prior to that, he was finishing his Granby before flipping over. Yes. So that happens. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Can you show that again? No. <laughs> Well, later I will do it to you, so because I want to show what, what uh, the technique we did. So up, go, and right away the land on your knees. So right away, yeah, this is better. Okay, if, and also go again, if you want to do a later stuff, it's not like bad and it's not like a lower lever or whatever, then go to here, jump over. So this, that, and then here. This happens. And now we're back what we did before, okay? On the back, back side, back of steps. Yeah, now from here, the English, turn the shoulders, not turn the vertical, and go. Yeah, and then that's what we did before, actually, when we, you know, had that section. So everything kind of connects. So I'm not saying that this is one is fancier, one is like, you know, more beginner. They both can happen. If you mess up, better harness, whatever, you land, nothing happens. If you can flip in air, land on your knees already, I guess it's better. Okay, more. But you have to also expect that things go to shit and you just flip over to the other side on the hook and then you're still okay, you can do the move we did before. 
Okay, so let's go and ask the question now. I, I, I answer you personally. Yeah. So, nice. And the balance. Wait. And now go to the knees. Go to the question. Uh, I don't mind them at all. It's like, uh, but I have to address them. Uh, this is a. This would be a bad thing I do right now in a sport context because clearly I can just stop him going around my my body. <clears throat> I can easily stop him going there whichever way. I can just have a more seatbelt better. There has to be a precursor, but right now I'm teaching the move that I want you to do more. So precursor is already, we've done the setup. That's uh, you know, already set and they're pulling. Now I can go. <clears throat> of course, if I'm, you know, I'm not pushing or pulling, whatever, they can keep doing hawking. So it's, it's set because I want to show the move. And if the move, if you know the move, then we can play it. So it's inconsistent. And then, because uh, then if walking happens or something else happens, it's just one of the tools you use. It's, uh, again, like yesterday we said, you know, going up, it's a risky tool because it exposes us to backs and stuff, but it's a road worth taking because it leads to top. But it comes with a price, yeah? So top is always, that's, I love the trade-off. You wanna get on top, you go through a little bit, through some minefield first. So. You can think what would stop it, but uh, if I would do it in a sport context, then I would do a definite setup. Like uh, people uh, do their own, that like maybe he wants to do a very awesome hawking and I don't, I don't want that. So go hawking, just go hawking, hawking. And I'm like, I'm not, I'm not giving you this, you know? And then go hip up. And then, you know, then the separate. And then they definitely like it. Pull it back also then, you know? Maybe rich. Maybe rich. Which one? No lie. Just me and yeah. Yes, and then you can walk and grab my head. Yes. So, I don't think I have time to go then. There's a different uh, ways of pulling the arm out. It's more like a, uh, we go in that way. Maybe you have time, we'll see. I have to think, that did I have anything else about that turning inwards? Or was this the, like what I thought? Maybe we do other stuff also, it's just oh, everything connects. But yeah, you can think of how to stop it, but don't stop it. Have that precursor like I'm pulling and then just learn the move. And then add it to the game later, you know, you just have the tool. And it's like, you have to have a case for it. But it's bad when you don't have that option, when you need it. And you only have the going away option and sometimes they prevent going away and you don't have that inverting option, yeah? So it's good to have everything and then use the tool. It's not like only jab, jab, cross, uppercut, body shots, you know, low, high, everything, hooks. So, uh, that would be the philosophical thing. It's already set up, it's done, yeah? So, uh, what else? Uh, so you can have an easy right away to the knees. You can have on a hip, and then we repeat what we did before. You, if you want, you can also repeat uh, the inside the guard stuff. Let them turn around or use the hooks to stop it, you know? So why not, let's say I keep the, in the position, let's say in here, yeah? And then, you know, and they learn to, uh, so let's say, right now if the hooks are out, yeah, they can do the inward stuff, go back. But now the hooks are in, they turn around, no? Inward trim, turn around inside the guard. Yeah. Balancing, balancing, yes, okay? So you can do both. So in that side, turn around inside the guard, mess with hooks or don't, free the hip, jump over the same move, land on the hips, or land right away in the air like a cat under under knees, yeah, and lift the correct leg. So you can repeat everything again. Also one side, you don't have to do both sides at the moment. I'm not in a camp of training only one side. Somebody has said, like most people said, only one side do this, one side, the other side do that. I don't know yet. It seems stupid, but it also makes sense. So, because it's just, I think you have to be like obviously good in both, and then you have a preference. But not training at all, it's kind of, I think it's kind of dangerous. Yeah, so uh, that, that means, yeah, so let's work. Inside the guard. That stuff, let's work. Five, six minutes. Every time you see me, if you, if you would have said I jump over. We did under downside, yeah? And they go to knees, yeah? Go. Okay. Uh, this under downside also works when you have hook in. This it makes it really hard because you have to turn inside the closed guard basically or keep the hook out. Uh, but, you know, when you're here, we know that the way we are in the back control, we can actually push the hook out. And that, if this is in, they, wait, because I, uh, give me a look. I want to block that hip turning around, yeah? So either I have hook, wait, and a hook, they cannot turn around, or they push the hook in. Now they can still go to the knees, go. 
And now I end up in a much shittier, shittier position and knee has to be also up. I recommend knee to the far hip. Okay, not even knee on the mat, just, that's, that's just knee, go back. So if you end up in a uh, half guard situation, turn in, wait, stop. And I will just put the knee there, just for the rent from them coming up. If it's this, they're already like more closer to stuff. So this, and now I have time again. So if I have knee out, yeah, and blocking that far hip. So they, they, it's more like the running into posts. So, again. so you can do the same thing also on the downside, hook in. And now, go. Yeah, and only knee up yeah, right away, and then figure out how you get to arm out. And then I'm in a very bad position and you can recover. So, and also if you have to lean back a little bit from there, you really get your arm out, so you leave the half part. That's also good, I push you away, you have open guard top, I'm open guard bottom. So, awesome escape, you were just in a back control, surviving, and now you're half guard top, open guard. So, that is a very good exchange, I think. So, uh, that is also able to done like this. So now you, you see like, uh, hooks in, hooks out, which hook, you know, you have certain exceptions. You can really escape a position, but also you can, you know, not fully escape it, also you have different options to attack. So I think this is very, you know, very underused move that you should have in your arsenal. And everybody usually thinks like you wanna put your back on the mat and everything else, but just going to the knees. It's uh, fighting for top again. And then you have both, putting your back on the mat as a guard, you know, escaping, turning towards, or going to the knees. Then it's a jab and cross, and then you can make it work. You can threaten one and do the other, you can threaten another, do one. So, and as a back controller, uh, the guy that develops back attacks, you have to know that that's a move available. Then you have to counter it because it's kind of dangerous to, to do not know it. And then you fall victim to it, yeah? Even if you don't like it yourself, I will not do it, that's not my game, somebody will do it to you. Yeah, so it's better to know it than then have a reaction for it. So it's in, that, in that sense, anybody, anybody needs to know it. Everybody, so do it again. If you want to try, one hook in version. A little bit harder. Oh, I'm the first I addressed also, so uh, I never, I never done this class, so I, I'm very interested in questions what come up, and usually they're more reality-based questions. What if, and you can't do those things, and I do this and that. I don't mind this, so then I did, because I have to address them. And one thing also I would address now is like if they have a really good harness, then it's uh, it's also dangerous to turn in because they can close it. So that's why we have hawking, we widen the seat belt, and then if we want, we slip through. So it's widened and then they can't close it so fast. Plus the reality, the, like reality, yeah? so I would do it more this way, adding also my wrist. So I would do, let's say, if I'm already, during, I would be here. So if you squeeze, if somebody is squeezing hard, if I would be this, then it's dangerous to turn inwards. I probably get caught in the side chokes and everything else. So I probably go in. I would do version that requires more pushing the shoulder in. So if I have this precursor, I will play a little bit. And now I'm feeling that maybe now I turn in. So it has to be like I widen and then I feel it. I have to know the level also which, from which trap I can go through. How, how minimally wide it has to open that I can go through, minimal. So it has to be tested. And the smaller the gap is, I have to be more aggressive. Or the better setup, or in a sparring situation, it's, again, easier. Because they're having their own thoughts and then right now just concentrating on me, okay? So that is also reality stuff that is, is wrong with this class. But it, today is more like a movement thing. You have to have that arsenal, and reality kicks in kind of later. Then things, you have to have setups, and then, I don't think you have to force this, just as a, as a cross or something, as a tool, you have to have it in your arsenal. Okay, so now let's do other way. Uh, we have a different way of escaping, let's say, seat belts. So now we're sideways, seat belt, and I will show you also why it happens, it's kind of weird. Yeah, so now I'm doing this. So why they're back there, I will also show you in context. But now I'm, you know, I would be this, with a seat belt and having, you know, a mini baby rich or even a hockey. But when I move around, I need a hawking and then I go this. And then I slip out. So squeeze a little bit. And then certain things happen. 
Ideally, I grab the head and end up in top, but that's not necessary because they will adapt and blah, 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 you know? But just as a movement, as the longest one you can take and against a stubborn opponent, this can happen. And also, your head can be stuck. But first, let's do it without the stuckness. So, because they can clearly stuck the head and then we have to do another, go to knees. So, right now, this, yeah. So, kind of like, head up. And later, we have to go this. And then, hold on, come. We have to switch the legs. Usually, we end up here, then we switch, and then the head or elbow pops out. It's the same kind of seatbelt escape, lifting the neck, leg. So try it first. We'll see how much you can do it. Uh, we'll see. I, I think a couple of versions of this, and then we'll just drill and repeat everything else we did. Just it's both ways to escape the seatbelt scan. Kind of. So, and the context would be this. Uh, take the back. Uh, sorry, turtle. Turtle, let's roll, we fall over. They go belly down, they switch the side. Wait, and then I'm doing my stuff with hawking. Yeah, I don't let them up, try to get to knees. It's really, really hard. So I'm doing hawking, and then they usually can stop, they can put my, uh, their knees on my back and stuff, they can stop, you know, me shrimping. And then we have our cross also. You can play with jab and crosses. People will do this, they will put the shins and stop you shrimping backwards. So that's the context of this. Okay, sideways, seatbelt and let them do it. Head slipping out, then hold tighter. They go to the knees with their head stuck. And then see which leg you have to be up to actually pull your head or elbow out. Okay, let's go. Could be a last part, could be something else after that. It's already a lot. I know. And also, of course, I know it's too much. Yeah. I know. I do it purposely. Uh, because this is more like information class. Last time it was more drilling class. We drilled a lot in the end and tried to like, you know, the Kimura trap and stuff. This is more like I want you to do the move. And then I, I show the, the moves, you know, so where they happen. And then you know the options. And then you just have to do them again. And the doing part is on you against lesser skilled people, lesser weight people, and just use that direction. And you have to show your back, I guess, more, and make it work. It's fun to train that move, I think. It's, it kind of, I think it gives you good options to, you know, get out. Otherwise, like old stuff, back on the mat, back on the mat. So, I will show you a couple of things what you missed. A little bit about the movement patterns. Uh, because if you don't have the patterns, then it's more like a technique, technique. But if you have the patterns, I think you have an easier time. So again, take my back, Mr. Rule. So one is head up, and there has to be a weight precursor that I can do this. So you can also start with, you know, maybe it's wrong seatbelt. You know, head up also. Head up. Yes. So even right now, yeah, I, I do this. I can walk, and the head comes up. If I'm right away with this, I get stuck. Yeah. So, and if I, if it's really, really good harness, I go with the, with the, with the, with my, uh, to my knees. So right now, yeah. It was like okay in a very okay line that I was like okay, do I go to knees or do I do this? So first, shadier one. Head down. Head up and just walk sideways. Like the broken toe. Yeah. And then weirdly, the head goes out in this arm bar section. You just feel it. Oh, oh, oh suck your head in. No, 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 don't stretch. Don't stretch. And head goes out from here. Okay? You can't see it. So even if I'm, this is quite annoying, you know. Usually your head is a little bit here. It's hanging, so you get the head position first. I'm actually on the wrong side. So head down, head down. This would be, you know, the side I want. Head up. So he gets that first, actually. Quite long. So now, nah. oh, sorry, and tuck your chin. Hold on. Go, 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 go. And I let him out, and then I make it tight. And I make it more precise. So head up, go, go. See, the arm fit is the one. Okay? And it has to be like a precursor. It's if I really, now if I'm here, clearly they can't do it. It's way more stuff. Go to knees. Over my head. Go, go, go. So, go to knees. 
Yes. And then like this. Okay? So I will show it one more time. So, Sita. And feel the head is quite weird to, you know, to be like if I win the head. So. Here. And if the head is more stuck, you can have the head grab also, it doesn't matter. And then, usually it's this, hold on tight. Now I'm going to switch. And if I switch, the head comes out. And the head, the arm stays. You have to switch. If it's a bad harness, you don't have to switch. If it's really tight harness, you have to switch the legs in end. So you go to the knees, and then you have to switch to get your head out. So those are maybe the two last things we do, yeah? So it takes a while. So if you want this, you can do it, but I will say like this. Do a ratio of three to one or two to one. Two times, do what we did. Underhook downside, hook in without the hook in. Underhook upside, all the swinging over, everything else we did. Inside the close guard turning. Three, let's say in a ratio one, try this. So you're still doing something you know, and then trying something you don't know. And you're still like, okay, I can do it, my brain still functions. Okay, and you get those rest from that new information. And new information, do it light. Let them out, give them success because the brain is very tired. So don't start right away, nothing works. Show them the way out, you can stack here, you can't see that where the head has to be. So we'll start this and, okay, let's go. Yeah, you do it okay. yeah. So he escapes. And there is a transitional headlock. Go. See? And. Yeah, turn inwards. Yes, but the middle guys are always close. So, he ends up in a headlock. Just as the YouTube technique. Go back to it again. Uh, I don't think it's every time there, but it's just uh, for an attacker, you have to know that they can grab and transitionally get a headlock. It's wonderful. If somebody tells you it's bad jiu jitsu, you know, they should know better. See? If you even get through, that's there also. I, I don't know, I don't care, I don't think it's 100% likely and stuff, it doesn't matter really, I'll take it. But you have to know it's there, and that, so you know where to keep your head, and you see that, you know, they're reaching something, uh, so you can hide your head and stuff, so. It's good to know those things, those tricks, and they can happen also. Uh, maybe you do it to lower levels, whatever, but they're still there, so. Uh, now I'll give you a different visual, um, uh, Mr. Villa. Uh, I will maybe systemize it in your head so you have an easier time remembering stuff. So, first we did this, let's say. I would structure it differently. So, underhook downside, and they go to the knees, yeah? Knee up, yeah? And then arm up, yeah? So, that's one. Then you can do the same thing, underhook downside with the hook in. Still the, you know, baby bridge and stuff, wait. No, oh, baby bridge, and then they go to the knees. But now it's half card, and they can still do it, okay? Now, we can go both hooks in, and we go underhook topside. Now they turn around inside the guard, same move. I will help them to do it right now, come around. Still, he's already in three cases, he has done the same move all over, yeah? We're just moving from side to more to center, okay? Then we go off hook, only one hook, top out, you know? Last time we did this side, yeah? So now we were in center, he turns around. Then we take one hook out, and he go to the twisted hawking, yeah, switch hawking. So, switch the legs. Switch the legs. Go inward, kill the hook, and jump over. Yeah, to the knees. What are we doing here? So, and then same move, okay? So, in all four cases, he did the same move. So, on the hook downside, same thing. Wait, give me the back. Underhook downside hook. Same thing. Go back. Underhook upside, both hooks. And then he moves, wait, he moves inside the guard. Then I take the hook out, and he can go inward, and then jumps over me. That's still the same move. So it's, in all four cases, same thing. So it is complex, but it's like, I love that it's like, you can use it in whole different cases. And the top hook has to be out, so that's why we don't do underhook downside hook in. It's a little bit different, yeah? The hook stops the turning, so top hook has to be out, that's also precursor. 
and something else has to happen so you can have that direction. So jab has to be there and that's your cross. Okay, so uh, out of the blue, it's kind of hard to jump over me in that sense. Going to the knees is easier, but jump over me version needs certain stronger precursor. So I hope that visual also helped what you did. You can systemize it or just pum, 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 pum. You just do the same move over again, yeah? And then you have variations, you know? Like Marcus was showing, like, you know, you use the hooks in a mount and stuff and you don't let them, you know? But that's all like in a sparring situation. It gets more messy. So try it again. We have almost, you know, I'd say 10 minutes before we stop. And then I think that visually systemizing it helps you better understand also what you just did. Otherwise, just like four moves where. Tuk, 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 tuk. Okay? That's, that's, I love the power of the you know, one move. And then if you want the three to run ratio, do the new one. I kind of did it because it helps you to reset, because you do something else and you go back to that. And it also, you do something new and it makes the old stuff look easier. You're like, ah, that's so you know, hard. You go with the stuff you're already familiar with. So I did it for reset also. Plus, I want to show it's there. You have that also running out, but four to one right now. Four moving this way and one going that way. So use that ratio nicely also as a, as a try new things. And 10 minutes, let's go. Ask for help. A couple of add-ons, uh, guys come in. Uh, you can still do it, just a reset from the brain. And now I show you more, a little bit with arms. I haven't mentioned them, but they're there. You can add them later, do the same move again. Slowly, Use the, lose the top hook. Go to knees. See, wait, stop. See, you can grab the head. Like other side we did, you know, I showed the good knees, you grab the head. You can actually grab the head here, go. It helps you to like pull in, okay? So that's one, you can grab the head. The last one we did, we, I grabbed the head and went to the knees, uh, grabbing Raul's head. You can do it there. And also, uh, who's that? Try to jump over. Uh, go under the top side and Miska jumps over. I will show you one thing also. You lose the hooks. And, oh, slowly, jump over. Stop. Stop. Oh, no. Put your arm on the mat. No? Which arm? Try to push which arm pushes. Yes. That arm helps to push, see? And this can grab. And now you flip around. So one pulls, one pushes. Yeah? So that's also there. Go. So now you can add arms. The least important, kind of the most important. Okay? So pushing and grabbing the head also helps. Let's go, five minutes. Now. We have now, I think, two hours on the mat. Uh, try to use it. Also, today, yeah, I would recommend. If you see they're trying to use it, let them do it today. They want to get better at this, yeah? And definitely, if they've done it a couple of times and you make it harder, but let them do it today. Definitely, if they want to jump over you, don't just kill it. They're trying something new. Yeah, so let them do it. And they return the favor. You can both try in a sparring, those things. It's super easy to like stop it because you know what they're doing and they're very clumsy at it. Okay, so, uh, and definitely have that. And if they've done it enough times, you know, so to speak, you feel, you also show them that I have a counter and then this happens. But in a good ratio that they get to try it. Um, uh, so try to, even if in the back stuff, you sometimes take the top hook out so they could go, you know, you, you create those situations, they can try it. And they, sometimes it takes for them time, oh, I can go. Let them do it. Let them integrate this and try it. Even more, in open mats if you can. So the cursor was the top, top even I let them turn around inside the guard. Yeah, don't stop them, let them do it. Uh, so we do, we, those, real, those rules we have always in our gym. Always we integrate them in those moves, I would say even you can't stop them. Let them do it, make it harder. If you do it good, they go, you raise the resistance and then let's say first roll you can't stop, second roll you can. We don't have those rules right now, but just let them do it today, two hours if you roll. Uh, we have methods to make it work in a sparring in that sense, yeah? So, uh, that's it, I think. Uh, and then uh, there's a lunch and there's open mat. And you right understand 12 o'clock, you can cry, yeah? <laughs> it's actually 12, so, perfect time. So, thank you, yeah, sure. Thank you.
Nelson. Nelson. Victor. Try to use this. Yeah. This is desperate. I will show you what happened. It's actually cool. Like this. Send the coach. See that? It's like I thought the most disabled is the quality. I was like, I was like, okay, actually, I think the first. And I was like, actually, why do you send me like this? But for a joke, I will post again, I think, your class picture. Yes. What's up? Oh, come on, guys. This is like offensive. This is offensive. This is. So. Look at the camera, not the baby. <laughs> <laughs>